Good afternoon. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Mommy and I first started discussing who she want giving reflections at her service, the first thing she said was, I can tell you who I don't want. <laughs> your daddy. <laughs> so he'll be up there crying and stuff. <laughs> so daddy, make sure you honor her final wishes now. Don't you get up here with that popcorn fever. <laughs> and she said he'll be up there doing all that crying and stuff. So with that in mind, I'm going to keep this as lighthearted as possible because it's probably going to be about the only way I'll get through it without being up here doing all that crying and stuff. But I wanna share with you a few lessons from the woman who's been my estrogen partner for over 48 years in our little testosterone-dominated world. <laughs> my first and longest teacher and nurturer, my biggest cheerleader and champion, and who in her final months would allow me to affectionately greet her with a fun, hey girl. And she'd reciprocate as only she could, hey girl. With the blessing and unwavering support of my husband, I moved home with my parents the day mommy came home on December the 5th after her extended stay in the hospital and then rehabilitation center after she had her first seizure on October 20th. Alongside my dad, I had the privilege, the privilege of caring for mommy. And despite a rare aggressive brain tumor, mommy never stopped living, never stopped fighting, and never stopped teaching life lessons. Like the day mommy, daddy, and I received the news in the doctor's office, she just simply placed her hand upon her head, she closed her eyes, and began to shake her head just a bit. And when asked if she had questions, she motioned no with her lips perched. She remained quiet. Mom knew I'd covered all the bases when it came to questions, so she was just free to simply be. Upon getting in the car, and getting her all securely settled. Yolanda Adams' The Battle Is Not Yours, It's the Lord's immediately came on the radio. We listened in silence. After the song ended, I asked, Mommy, is there anything you want before we have to head back? Because at this time, she was still an inpatient at the rehab center. And her reply, you know, I ain't had no good pizza in a while. <laughs> and the lesson, trust God, give it to him, and move forward and enjoy life. And it really is just as simple as that. Once mommy came home from the rehabilitation center, she'd worked really hard to get stronger. I noticed that on several occasions, she wasn't always up to it, but she'd still push really hard to try. If the physical therapist would require 15 reps, mommy opted for 16. If 20 were on the menu, she pushed for 21. And if they wanted her to do a lap around the living room with her walker, she was determined to do two. And it was on one occasion that I stopped her mid-lap when she was walking past the bookcase in the living room, where there's a framed photo of me with my two older brothers, Stanley and Kenny. And so I stopped her and I said, hey, mom, you know, you got some good looking churn. <laughs> so she stopped and she looked at the photo and she turned back and she looked at me and she said, that's cause they got a good looking mama. <laughs> And then she kept right on strolling. <laughs> and the lesson, never stop fighting. 
Always go the extra mile and do it with joy and gladness. You're investing in yourself, but also in those who are watching. On another occasion, when mommy's memory was really taking a toll due to the tumor, she was reaching back to like those high school memories. So she began talking about dad and where he had gone to high school. I quickly confirmed, but then I reminded her, but mommy, you went to Joe Toller. That's right, I went to Joe Toller. And mommy, your teacher was Miss Brody. That's right, Miss Brody, and she didn't play either. And mommy, you played basketball. That's right, and I was the star. <laughs> and mommy, you ended up marrying Frank. That's right. And mommy, you guys had three beautiful children, Stanley, Kenneth, and Lori. That's right. And without missing a beat, with a smile on her face, I said, and mommy, of the three children you had, Lori is the prettiest of all three. <laughs> With that smile, she said, I, I don't know about all that. <laughs> Mommy, the lesson, never let your guard down. <laughs> Not even with family. And always keep a sense of humor about you. And lastly, Mommy has always demonstrated that quiet strength that she's operated in. Clearly something special. She's had the ability to speak ever so gently and move a mountain. And in most cases, that would mean Frank Wilson. <laughs> Mommy often said, I asked the Lord to let me live to be 83 plus. I want to live to be as old as my mama was, 83 plus. As we know, that wasn't God's will for her. No, his plan was far greater. But in her final lesson, she never uttered a word, yet she spoke volumes. During her last week of life, as she lie in a coma, Medical professionals gave their best judgment as to how long she had left to live. Hours to just a few days. I suppose when she surpassed expectations and remained with us days longer, it prompted someone to reach out with unsolicited advice telling us what to do to get her to move on, which we ignored. No, instead, mommy did what she's always done. She went the extra mile, working her way closer to her goal and beyond. No, mommy didn't leave us exactly a month shy of her 83rd birthday on February 13th. My thought is she probably said, I've got just one more in me and pushed to get just a tad closer. And I'm sure mommy, being extremely independent, wasn't going anywhere until she was ready and God called for her, and not a moment sooner, and not at the prompting nor prodding of anyone. The lesson, tune out the noise and simply tune into Jesus. Sometimes you have to go to the garden alone and wait on him. Mommy, I know that's not you there. That's just the vessel that God blessed you with to carry you for nearly 83 years. So that's not you, but you're in heaven. So mommy, if God is allowing you to listen in or to watch in on your service today, mommy, if you're listening and if you're watching, mommy, you waited 34 years for me to arrive when you and daddy welcomed me into our little testosterone dominated home in Arlington. And I'm not sure how long before our father calls for my ultimate arrival when I'll finally, when I'll finally get to come home to a home that's prepared just for me. 
that's dominated by sheer perfection and peace. But when he calls for me, mama, I'll be ready. And when he calls, I sure hope he allows you to welcome me in with one more, hey girl. <laughs>